What's up everybody? Today we're talking smart homes and specifically how to migrate your existing smart home in whatever ecosystem you have into Apple's HomeKit or Apple Home ecosystem without having to go out and buy all new devices for everything that you have. Now, for those of you just getting into smart home technology, there's probably a few different ecosystems you've probably heard of. There's a Google Home, there's Amazon Alexa, there's Samsung Smart Things, there's uh, Apple HomeKit, which we're gonna talk about today. The problem is most devices across all these different ecosystems don't really work that well with each other. Some of them do, some of them don't, but nearly none of them work very well with Apple HomeKit. A little backstory before we fully dive into this is I'm currently running Samsung Smart Things as my uh, ecosystem of choice to add different devices into. I create the automations within Samsung, but then I use Google Home to run all my automations with my voice or with the Google Assistant. And to give you an idea of the types of devices that I'm running, basically I've switched out almost all the switches in my house for smart switches or dimmers. And I've been using the GE or in Brighton, it's the same one, just different branding, uh, GE or in Brighton Z-Wave switches and dimmers. I've also got different door sensors, window sensors, motion sensors, buttons, all these different types of things, and they've all hooked up very easily via Z-Wave to the Samsung SmartThings. I also have a couple various little random devices here, the robot vacuum, some LED strips, uh, under cabinet lights in the back. But again, they all hook up very easily to Samsung SmartThings, which then connects to Google Home, and I can do everything that I need to with these two things. So you may be wondering, why the heck are you trying to transfer everything over into Apple? And really the answer to that is because I wanna try it and I wanna see how Apple's HomeKit works because I've switched over nearly everything else in my house, but the one thing that I've never touched at all is Apple's Home app or HomeKit ecosystem. So I wanted to get everything into HomeKit, but I didn't wanna to have to pay thousands of dollars to replace literally all the devices that I just told you about. So I did some research and there's really only two options that I found that seemed reasonable and that's either Homebridge or Home Assistant. Now Homebridge is the much simpler version where essentially Apple's Home or HomeKit is still doing all the automations and is acting as the brains of everything, but Homebridge is bringing in everything into Apple's HomeKit or Apple's Home app and then letting the app run the, the automations and be the brains. On the other hand, Home Assistant is the brains of the operation and it just connects to Apple's Home or HomeKit and lets Apple's Home app be the controller for all the different things that Home Assistant is doing. So as I mentioned, Homebridge is the much simpler of the two options. So that's what I'm gonna start with. I'm gonna try that. And if that doesn't do everything that I needed to, then I can try Home Assistant, but for now, I'm gonna show you how to switch over to Homebridge. The first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is you have to actually set up a server. The easiest way to do this is to buy a Raspberry Pi. Now I got a Raspberry Pi 4. I have a whole nother video explaining how to build it, how to set it up. So after you have your Raspberry Pi built, now it's time to actually install the Homebridge software onto it. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is take your micro SD card, plug it into your computer, and then you're gonna to wanna to open the Raspberry Pi Imager app. If you don't have this, go to raspberrypi.com, download this, it's the easiest way that I've found. Before you actually open the Raspberry Pi Imager app, what you're gonna wanna do is download the Homebridge uh, image file. So you're gonna go to homebridge.io, then on the homepage, just a little way down, you click on the official Raspberry Pi software link. You're gonna click on that. Then you'll click on the link that says download here, and you'll download either the 32-bit or the 64-bit depending on what Raspberry Pi version you have. So once you have that downloaded, you're gonna open up the Raspberry Pi Imager app. Again, make sure your micro SD card is connected. You're gonna select which version Raspberry Pi you have, in my case, the Raspberry Pi 4. Then you're gonna click the Choose Operating System. Then you're just gonna scroll all the way down and select Custom. Now what you're gonna do is browse to that file that you downloaded, select it, and then choose your micro SD card that is for your Raspberry Pi, and then you're simply gonna click Next. Now you have the option to change some settings that will get installed as the operating system. This includes 
Uh, if you're gonna use a Wi-Fi Raspberry Pi, then you can put the SSID for your network and the password in there. You can do a, a few different things, relatively simple. You can play with it. And then once you're done choosing the settings that you want, click next again, and then it's gonna install. You let it write to your SD card and voila. Homebridge is now installed on your SD card and all you have to do is if you have the Raspberry Pi on ethernet, make sure you plug the ethernet cable in first before you turn on the Raspberry Pi. That's the directions that it says. I don't know if it makes a difference, but plug in the ethernet, plug in the micro SD card, plug in the power, let your Raspberry Pi boot up. It might take a couple minutes to actually connect to everything. And then what we're gonna do is actually connect to the Homebridge server via your browser. So the next couple steps will actually be a little bit different for everybody, mostly everybody, unless you're using the exact same router that I am. But essentially what you need to do is find the IP address of that Raspberry Pi that is now connected to the network and powered on. So the way that I have done it is I'm using an Orbi router. So I just log into the Orbi router via my uh, computer browser, scroll down through the devices until I find the Raspberry Pi, copy that IP address, literally just paste it into the address bar of the browser, click enter, and boom. Instantly, Homebridge pops up, and then from there, there's just a couple more steps. And the first of these steps is actually to connect Homebridge to your Apple Home. So what you're gonna wanna do is on your phone, you will go to the Home app. I guess it doesn't have to be your phone, whatever, tablet, computer, whatever but go to the home app, click the plus, click add accessory, and then scan QR code. And you're gonna scan the QR code that is on the Homebridge home screen as soon as you opened it up. What that's gonna do is instantly connect Homebridge to your Apple Home and boom. Now the magic is basically done at this point. And then from here, what you're gonna be doing is depending on what smart home devices you want to add, you're gonna to go to the plugins page of Homebridge and you're actually gonna just go find the different plugins that match the smart home devices that you're using and just click install, install, install. And what that's gonna do is connect all the different things that you have and bring them into Apple's Home app or HomeKit. And from there, we're done. Again, all this was pretty simple. I know I might've made it sound complicated, but it took me all of three minutes to do all of this. And then everything is now in Apple's Home app. So if this is something that you're looking for, this is a very easy option. The Raspberry Pi can be a little bit expensive depending on what kit you get with the uh, what size SD card, the RAM. It can be a little bit expensive, but the one that I got was on Amazon. I'll link it below. It's the Canna kit. Uh, I think it was the eight gigabyte extreme version that came with an SD card. Everything worked perfectly fine. Again, I have a whole video showing how to build that, but also make sure you check out one of these videos if you're curious about Android or Apple or Google apps or any of these sorts of things. That's what we do here on this channel. Please be sure to subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Peace.